Yes, sir. My tricker. Back up in this thing, man. Today, we'll be traveling down another TikTok rabbit hole. Let's get it. How do you feel when you become part of this whole kind of conspiracy theory stuff going on? That was completely unexpected. You almost have to laugh that, you know, lady, why would I want to know where you are? I mean, really? What, is that how I spend my time is tracking you? In my overall situation, I have nothing to complain about uh you know somebody coming up to me on the street which is apple sometimes and saying that i've chipped them and i'm following them around you know that's a total reversal doing that or you know i own one four thousandths of the farmland in the u.s and people have some view that somehow trick, yeah. That. yeah one four thousandth uh of the, big country. of the for farmland but and but what can you do with one four thousand share? I at least in my math, I have a hard time uh, pulling off a conspiracy unless you get up to at least two or three four thousands. <laughs> uh, so I have people who track it, and we often think, which of these things should you respond to? Um, you know, if they get broad enough, then you want to respond. If they're just in the truly crazy niche then probably you don't want to amplify it. He says he doesn't want to amplify it, but he seems to know every single conspiracy about itself and cares enough to have people track it. So if any of his people are watching this video, let him know that just makes him look even more guilty. I wanted to talk to you about CERN. Is CERN learning anything from ancient Egypt? CERN is the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. It's the largest machine in the world located in Switzerland and it's all underground and it uses this gigantic track with this underground tube that's connected and they send atoms in opposite directions and speed them up to a percentage of the speed of light and then let them collide. They analyze the collision to see what comes out of this collision between atoms. But something else they discover in this, in the process is that they create microscopic black holes. In my opinion, again, this is nothing that I've read, but my hypothesis is that part of the work going on at CERN is to learn how to create stable wormholes. What Einstein and Rosen called an Einstein-Rosen bridge, where you take space and you fold it, punch a hole in between to make a connection, a shortcut through space time i appreciate the quest for knowledge but we haven't even explored 100 percent of our oceans yet or even mastered space flight so i don't necessarily think that we have the capabilities to handle a wormhole one miscalculation and it's a wrap on the whole universe this is not fake and if you do this your head is literally about to become like this now if you're a gamer you're probably gonna want to watch this video so a while ago scientists actually predicted what the future gamer is gonna look like with these photos basically showing everybody with hunchbacks and weird body features including essentially this great big line in their head well an indent now of course they predicted this and it's actually come true so a few twitch streamers including the first one who did this curtis when he shaved his head on live stream and literally showed an indent in his head sparking of course lots of other gamers and people to come out and do this on live stream as well showing a great big indent in their head now of course causing this headsets people you know these gamers will have headsets on all day long now if you're in school you come home from school play games all day you may even have one yourself now this has become a pretty big thing and is reported that you know hundreds of thousands of people are getting this worldwide already however there has been reports that potentially once you stop wearing the headset it does actually go away and become normal again but we don't know but lots of gamers now worldwide are stopping to use headsets even though of course they're extremely popular and people love them but yeah we don't know for sure the actual consequences of this but as i said it's likely that it does return to normal after a while so we'll have to see i think i'm good now but i might be switching to earbuds am i the only one or has anyone else thought of why would the astronauts have their star on the hollywood walk of fame why are uh, are they actors? Maybe having a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame isn't strictly reserved for the film industry, which is why they have one, but that doesn't make their case for the moon landing any better. They might as well just give them an Emmy Award for that performance. Because we did go there, and, and that's the way it happened. What do you believe to be the best hypothesis for why crop circles exist? What are they trying to convey? What is their purpose? On my very first year and first trip to England, it was 1992. And I was out in one of the big patterns that left everybody awestruck because of the size and the perfection, no footprints, it, they were astonishing in 1992. And a man walked over to where I was and he was making comments about, it's remarkable, isn't it? There's even three or four layers there's braiding 
And so we're now talking about the astonishing details in a formation. And then he said, well, you know, I, I know somebody who works for the Central Intelligence Agency he told me that they're very interested in these crop formations and that they've got a satellite now that is trying to get satellite images of every crop formation that is happening on the world because they are convinced that what we are dealing with is mathematical language from another intelligence that is using the crop formations to judge the accuracy of their travel in time. If crop circles are real and an advanced extraterrestrial civilization is capable of time travel in the first place, then I'm sure they have some sort of device or instrument that can judge the accuracy of their time travel versus making crop circles. If not, then they shouldn't be time traveling. Yeah, so there, there's the Nickelodeon logo, right? And like the perspective I've got, I don't have a, a full top down, but you can almost see there's that little nub out there. I think it's just the way that the camera is taking this picture. If you look at a direct bird's eye satellite view of Epstein Island, I mean, it's pretty much the Nickelodeon logo. Maybe it's just a coincidence that the island and the logo are superimposable on each other like that, but with the Drake Bell situation that's unfolding right now, you never know. The power of Archimedes mirror may have been used for more than just destruction. I believe it was used to shape some of the structures that we see, those megalithic structures from the old world, cut and formed with laser-like precision. And then, of course, all the melted remains we see. It shows us clear proof, though, that we live in a post-apocalyptic world, surrounded by the buried and melted ruins of far more advanced civilizations than our own. It was not just the mud flood, nor the great flood of Noah. There has been many resets. Time and time again, like clockwork, just like a cycle, like everything else you see in this world. The parasites know of these events and use that for their advantage, gathering up as much resources off our backs as they can before the next reset. Question everything, friends. Until next time. Even with the Archimedes mirror, the construction of some of these ancient sites is so precise and the level of difficulty is so high that it would still take us millions of dollars in laser cutting equipment and cranes to accomplish this today. So they were doing something right. Just so we're clear on the scale of the issue, each electric vehicle battery for a heavy duty truck weighs 8,000 pounds. You need at least two of them. So we're talking the weight of, you know, four or five cars. And our, my friends and peers in the industry nationwide who have tried to make efforts to put in, say, hey, I'm going to convert a dozen forklifts to electric, or I want to tee up a facility for 30 electric trucks. There's no power. The utilities come back, the cities come back and say, is this some kind of joke? One friend tried to put in, in Illinois, a uh, facility, tee it up for 30 trucks electrification. The city came back and said, this is some kind of joke. You're asking for more draw than the entire city requires. And just to give you an idea, 30, 50 trucks, that's like a five, six megawatt application. The factory that makes the trucks is a two megawatt factory. So in other words, they're the opposite of sustainable. I know the oil tycoons are gonna be excited to hear this one. I'm gonna be honest, I was today years old when I found out that cosmic lightning was even a thing. Thanks, Carol. The Santa Ana Watershed Project Authority, also known as SAWPAW, a joint power authority scanning portions of Riverside, San Bernardino, and Orange Counties, announced January 9th that it conducted its first cloud seeding event. The agency says that the four year weather modification program, which launched in November 2023, intends to evaluate the effectiveness of enhancing local water supply through cloud seeding in the region. Cloud seeding involves infusing silver iodide mixed with acetone particles into the clouds during a storm, causing ice crystals to form and water to condense into rain or snow. Stockpaw cloud seeded during three storms in the last week of December and the first week of January. While cloud seeding is not a new technology, first experiments took place in the 1940s. It fell out of favor in the 80s for being unacceptable, unacceptable ethically and an environmental hazard. Several unintended consequences from cloud seeding in the UAE demonstrated that cloud feeding operations lead to an increase in urban flooding. 
silver iodide is known to be toxic and is regulated under the Clean Water Act as hazardous substance. Studies have documented potential harms from bioaccumulation, particularly for aquatic life. Wow. And look at our county. You guys cloud seeded us on purpose. I don't think the so-called benefit of replenishing the watershed outweighs the consequences of urban flooding and damage to the environment. It's kind of embarrassing that they knew that back in the 80s and today is just a cloud seeding free for all. I would leave the whole continent if I walk into the bathroom and see a giant millipede at six o'clock in the morning while I'm trying to brush my teeth. I would not last long in Australia. Look at all these houses in Florida allegedly painting their roof blue. Blue, of all colors. Now, I know you've seen that video of that big green laser straight down. Look, it's fake, it's fake. It's the same person who did the face by the moon, same person who did the old man, they're all fake. If you go to his page, it's a whole bunch of CGI videos he makes himself. Now. There was a real green laser scanning the area I'm about to show you. But first, let's look at what Biden said in general. Because a lot of, if you fly over these areas that are burned to the ground, you'll see in the midst of 20 homes that are just totally destroyed, one home sitting there because they had the right roof on it. And anyway, since I took office, she must fly to Texas alone. That is pretty weird, isn't it? Now let's look at the news report of the real green laser. Pause. It's a plane flying low over people's homes, scanning the ground with that green laser. Welcome back, I'm Chris Zapati. And I'm Lois Tomey. So what does this plane, what is it doing? Wake News anchor Annette Montgomery joins us in the studio. And Annette, what did you learn? Chris and Lois, I learned who it's not after reaching out to everyone from the city of Cape Coral to the county, to the Florida Division of Emergency Management, to the South Florida Water District and Port Authority. Now, these low-flying planes with green lasers does not belong to them. One neighbor got so fed up, she purchased a flight radar to help narrow down the search for the owner. And besides that, with that original green laser video being fake that everyone's saying was in Texas, you know, it wouldn't have to be green. There's a lot of speculation about the colors. I'm about to show you a video real quick where allegedly a laser specialist says that the infrared laser is actually the most dangerous and you can't even see it in the first place. Oh, those awesome laser beams. Do you know which one's the strongest? If you guess the green one, you're wrong. That's an infrared laser. Crazy, right? The sketchiest part is that none of the agencies they asked about the green laser scan seem to know the purpose or where it came from. That plus Biden's little slip up would be enough for me to really go get the blue paint. Well, I wanted to lay down next to this crocodile for you guys to be able to see the perspective of how long this thing is. So keep in mind, I'm 6'3", about 250 pounds, and this tail's curled up, but it'll give you an idea of just how massive this crocodile is. I thought James the alligator from the last video was big, but even he would be terrified if he ran into this one. Breaking news. This is the balloon that was just found in Alaska and delivered back to the government. I believe it's being taken to Virginia. Now there's some things in here that I find that's very interesting. One is you can see the size of this. This is definitely something that's not a weather balloon as you see here. But look at this, if the junk that's going on, you see that guy, he just spun that like a propeller, which is very interesting because people were able to see that when the balloons flew over America a little over a year ago. Also watch this guy's hands of him picking up a cylinder piece, which is something that can go together with also this green stuff that's laying around. Now, I'm not able to show you, but if you were to zoom in on that, you can tell that that stuff is more than likely things of like a computer chip, uh, your video cards that go into your computers. That's exactly what this type of stuff looks like. And there's a ton of this that is laying around in there. You see how there's even more that's back here. So it's interesting to what you're seeing here. The next thing is you can see that these poles are chopped up. So it makes me wonder if whoever was flying these over knew that this one dropped, came and took out the main part of it, and then was hoping that all of this stuff would sink. Next, pay attention to all these lines that are laying across here. 
So this is one of the balloons that was flying over last year and this was taken by Dragon Lady. This is the wing, this is the shadow that's on the balloon. These are very large, but I want you to pay attention to the lines that are coming off of here. Those were likely to sit here and hold the stuff up as well as tethered lines to sit there and hold it while this thing was being lifted off. But as you see, that is possibly what all this white line is here. Now this thing looks like it could be the top, the bottom. I have no idea what this contraption is that's attached to the balloon. I'll play the video so you can see it, but yeah, I just have no idea of what that is. So do you think that this is a different type of balloon, like a weather balloon? Do you think that this is one of those balloons that is taking place? Also, by the way, I will tag this gentleman in the comments. Take care. God bless. There's really no way to tell what this is without it being fully intact. But if it was just a simple weather balloon and some institution would have come out by now to confirm that. Plus, if you Google images of weather balloons, they look nothing like this. This was like something you would find in El Chapo's basement. Most of you watching this video would probably dispatch of this creature just because of how creepy it is, but if you wouldn't, here's why this might be a good idea. This is a TikTok video that I got tagged in that shows a strange caterpillar-like creature that appears like it has a bunch of wood on its back. A ton of people in the comments were offering their different theories here, but what I believe this to be is a bagworm caterpillar. In order to provide some camouflage as well as protection, bagworm caterpillars will take these small pieces of twigs, they'll put them on their backs, and this is basically to help them defend themselves. After a certain period of time, they'll eventually turn into a bagwood moth. All of this is fine and dandy, but the reason that you would not want them on your property is because if you have trees or shrubs or any other type of plant, they'll completely destroy them. So if you see something like this crawling around your property, or hanging from a tree like this, then you should get rid of it. There are a variety of different pesticides that you can use, and if you see these guys and you're not sure what to do, then I would recommend calling a specialist. It's genius camouflage because I thought it was a pine cone at first. I've got this 3D printed steak from Redefined Meat that is meaty and fibrous, just like real meat, but 100% <laughs> vegan. And I'm gonna stick it in a Club Mexicana taco. I mean, it looks meaty, It smells meaty. It's got the layers of protein and fat that you would find in meat. And it's pretty juicy. I'm not gonna lie, it smells disgusting. But I probably would think meat smells disgusting too. So I'm gonna be open-minded. Right, now that we've loaded up our tacos, it's time to give it a try. It looks like meat, it smells like meat, does it taste like meat? That is very, very meaty. It's got that umami flavor. I doubt that 3D printed meat has any nutritional value. He might regret eating these microplastic steak tacos later. Okay, so don't you find it weird that yesterday, basically all the social media platforms went down globally. Meanwhile, Ryan Garcia, yes, the influencer boxer, it's quite random, but hear me out. He recently claimed that he was at the Bohemian Grove and he saw very explicit things that if released would completely break the internet. He said in this video that they took his phone, blocked his cards, etc this to my Instagram. taking advantage which is very similar to what happened to this guy just this time a bit more extreme if you didn't know already this guy has been going on the rampage for the last couple of days posting and saying some very questionable things and most people think he's crazy or on some sort of drugs. in fact many of these tweets exposing stuff have already been deleted and just a few hours ago he went on a voice call on twitter exposing some of the things he has info on but the girl he was with was trying her best to stop him from talking oh i don't give a bro they held me down and they made i don't give a anymore bohemian grove is real because i have the information on the leaks and i can expose them everybody thinks i'm crazy but i can show you proof every day no, that's, 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 he doesn't want to no, no, 
Exactly. Oh, it's dude. I don't know about you, but if you had a very profitable boxing career where you're making millions, would you just start faking stories for views to put your reputation and life in danger? To me, it seems like there has to be some level of truth to what he is saying. Also, you gotta bear in mind, this guy has tens of millions of followers on social. So if he was to put out videos and share what he claims he saw, I think we all know what would happen. But what do you think about this? And if he watches boxing fights, will he even make it to his upcoming one at this rate? I hope he's okay because he came out with another video saying that he was just trolling and he's only gonna be focusing on boxing from now on as if he was being coached to say that. Plus, I don't think anybody would risk their reputation exposing Bohemian Grove just to sell tickets to a fight. I'm here to announce my return back to Instagram. Now, over these past couple of days, you guys have seen some pretty intense things. I understand what they are and I don't understand what they look like. But I'm coming back to announce I'm not going to speak on any other topic other than boxing, sports, and my fight. The pyramids are not tombs. Changed my mind. This is a real Egyptian tomb, you know, where mummies of pharaohs were actually found. Grand entrances, spacious hallways, lavish architecture, art and carvings everywhere commemorating their And this is the burial chamber in the biggest tomb in the world, the Great Pyramid of Giza. A plain and uncentered granite box in a boring room with no carvings nor art, like anywhere in the entire pyramid oh and no mummy was found here either it was stolen by thieves who apparently took the hieroglyphs in the walls too here's an actual sarcophagus for a cat and another one for a person here are a few more from the same time period as giza all covered with majestic carvings and hieroglyphs that were crucial for preparing bodies for the afterlife and that's the sarcophagus in giza the biggest and most important tomb ever built the pyramid itself is just awkward to navigate with tight corridors and questionable architecture apparently designed to stop thieves meanwhile the valley of kings is an absolute marvel what you'd expect royalty to be buried in with no attempt at keeping grave robbers out oh what's that the Valley of Kings was made over a thousand years after Giza, during which time I guess they learned how to carve and paint on the walls of tombs, despite there being hieroglyphs far older than Giza itself. Well, what about the tombs at Saqqara, which are as old as Giza, yet adorned with the carvings, architecture, and even statues that you'd expect from a sacred burial chamber? If tombs looked like this 4,500 years ago, why would the most important one ever built during the same time look like that? I feel like Egyptologists either have no clue why the Great Pyramid was built, so they just called it a tomb, or they know exactly why it was built, but it doesn't fit into the common narrative, so they still call it its own. What is a skinwalker? A skinwalker is a shape-shifting demonic entity. It's essentially a, a Native American witch or warlock that that sells their soul in exchange for immortality, the ability to take on the skin or shape-shift. Oftentimes, myself and the caretakers just saw a glowing object appear right outside of homestead one or right outside of the ranch house and i've got the images and there are a lot of professionals who have remained silent have not wanted to go public that are now finally reaching out to our team and letting their stories be told these are first-hand accounts of activity evidence of transmedium you know unidentified aerial phenomena that was caught captured coming down from the sky dropping into the east field portion of the ranch and then exiting right below the helicopter, caught on GoPro camera, exiting the Mesa. If a skinwalker is just an entity that sold his soul to be able to shapeshift, then they got a terrible deal if this is how they end up looking. Bro, look at these clouds. A group of fishermen have experienced a bizarre sight from a boat in the Gulf of Mexico. This flying saucer-like cloud formation forming in the sky off the Florida Keys, looking like something out of a sci-fi movie. Fear not, though, the formation known as cavum or punch hole clouds are caused by planes. I see airplanes flying through clouds all the time and never seen this formation left behind, but I guess they got an explanation for everything. On uh, September 27th, 1950, the Philadelphia Inquirer readers were entreated to a bizarre headline which read, Flying Saucer Just Dissolves. The article told the tale of Joe Keenan and John Collins, two veteran Philadelphia police officers who spied a strange object plunging through the night sky less than 24 hours before, resulting in an encounter that neither man would ever forget. As the two police officers rounded the corner, they noticed a large glittering mass drifting towards an open field approximately half a block distant. The perplexed policemen observed that the strangely pulsating heap emitted a faint purplish, perhaps bioluminescent glow that illuminated the darkened field. The most disturbing thing about this odd object, according to the officers, was the fact that this iridescent gelatinous substance seemed to vibrate of its own accord. There's even one report that claimed the entity was oozing up a nearby telephone pole. 
Regardless of the limits of its mobility, the fact that this thing moved at all seems to indicate the officers in question that this blob-like entity was almost certainly a living organism. This stuff's been studied in labs, been photographed. It's a very real phenomena known as star jelly, and it's got a very long history. This is actually one of the pictures that has been taken of star jelly where they tested it and had no idea what the hell this is. It's a gelatinous substance that's sometimes found on grass, or less commonly, it's found on branches and trees. It's often described as a translucent or grayish white gelatin that tends to evaporate shortly after having fallen or after having been touched. They're often associated with meteor showers. It's also known as astral jelly, star rot, star shot, star slime, star sloth, star slover, star spurt, and star sludge. If scientists haven't even figured out what it is by now, then I have zero clue what star sludge could possibly be. It kind of reminds me of Ivan Ooze from the Power Rangers movie, though. My boss would never believe that the reason that I couldn't make it to work on time was because of a tumbleweed landslide. I'm getting written up for sure. Sub up, hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one.